it's Sunday the 8th of December 2019. I've had a couple of people ask me about producing more content for the channel. Uh, I, at the moment I, I only do videos every four to six weeks. Uh, I have been toying for a while about doing, a, doing a more regular videos and doing that on sort of a subscription basis, uh, which to be honest is the only, only way I can kind of justify spending that much time on it. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to gauge the amount of interest. I, I get some fairly uh, positive comments on the page, but you know whether people are willing to pay uh, for content is another matter. So I, I've, I've set up a, a little Patreon page here, um, and I'm, I'm sort of looking to gauge interest in that. So if you've got any thoughts on and, and whether you'd be interested in, in seeing more regular content and being willing to pay a small amount for it, um, you know I'd still run the free channel as well and do these these regular videos, but I'd try to try to do some more content that would be deeper dives into individual stocks and uh, and trends in the in the, the mining markets uh, you know I think that's there's probably a, a more willing people who might be willing to pay for that deeper research that might actually be more value for an investing point of view instead of the sort of the uh, quick run throughs that I'm doing at the moment on, on a lot of different companies uh, so yeah just if you're interested just drop me a, a comment on the uh, on this video uh, I read all the comments on the YouTube page. So yeah, just drop me a comment and I might um, also be able to gauge the interest. It's something I'm probably looking to set up in the next month. It's not, um, you know, I, it's might there might be written content as well eventually too. So that's, I'm just trying to gauge what people's interest is in that uh, and then I'll, I might um, set it up or not. But I need to know if there's, you know, enough people who'd be willing to subscribe that to make it worthwhile and get that, um, that to do their regular content. So to the mining markets now, um, I think there's been a, we've entered kind of a new phase in this this gold market rally. Uh, and as you'd expect, you've seen the last, you know, we've had, we've been able to sustain these prices above 1450 for the last four months now. Uh, and what you're seeing is that the, the cash that's being generated by a lot of these uh, bigger companies is now sort of filtering down and investors are starting to realize that some of these companies are very profitable at these levels. And there's almost like there's been a bit of a green light for a takeover action now, and it's happened very quickly in the last three weeks. Uh, and I had that. So the first the first acquisition was Saracen buying that the uh, the stake in the super pit in Kalgoorlie. I mean, this was not a it's not a cheap transaction, um, but I think what's happening here is companies like Saracen or, or Evolution Mining, um, they've been willing to meet. There's been assets that have been on the market for a long time, like this the. The super pit's been sort of talked about being available for sale for the last two or three years from Barrick. They've been wanting to pay down debt and um, get out of Australia predominantly. So they haven't been able to get fetch a price that they were happy with. But I think now the the Australian companies are willing to take that sort of risk and and you know back themselves and sort of bet a little bit on a on a sustained high gold price. Uh, and I think that's what what's happened here with Saracen. So. I'm um, I have, I'm not I'm not you know the transaction is not excellent they haven't got a, a, a very uh, low price for it but uh, I'm pretty I think it's in the long term probably a good move for them um, the only way it is, is sort of now is to get bigger and I, feel, I had a people a few people say that this is sort of indicative of a, a top in the gold market with these sort of fairly large transactions starting to happen here and I, I don't agree with that uh, yeah, and the reason is that Despite the fact that a lot of the Australian companies have done quite well and they've, you know, they've had share prices rise, you know, two or three hundred percent in the last two or three years. When I look at, you know, if you look at the GDX for example, we're still we're not even anywhere near a a uh, full-on bull market here in gold stocks. You know, it's we're still in the sort of early phase, but I think we might be we sort of transitioning now to a a more uh, consolidation phase, assets starting to to change hands. Companies starting to get bigger uh, and looking to, to grow or um, get more aggressive in takeover action. So it was funny that when when Barrick did this this transaction, in their case a divestment, they you know they're still in sort of in more of a defensive mode, I guess, looking to to spin out assets that they've acquired through um, the merger with Rangold, you know, and get rid of some of their lower quality assets, you know. And then a couple of days later, we had. Evolution mining, um, buying the Red Lake gold mine from Newmont, another asset that's been sort of talked about as uh, up for up for sale for quite some time. So again, this is quite a high a high cost mine, uh, very old operation, 
and probably had underinvestment and evolutions looking to sort of turn that around. Uh, you know, and that might take a while, but you know, it was it's these moves from it sort of in the in the gold sector and in, in most sectors of the market, you'll see this that the bigger movers start to go first, and then everyone else starts to follow. So that the the senior producers, the you know, mega cap stocks, make a move, and then that's almost the green light for the the rest of the sector to start looking at consolidation. And um, and we saw Kirkland Lake, uh, which is now one of the sort of senior producers as well. It is listed on the ASX, but uh, mainly a Canadian stock buying uh, Detour Gold for almost 5 billion Canadian there. So it's another huge transaction. That one there hasn't quite uh, gone through yet because um, it uh, requires a vote and it's, it is an all, all share offer as well. So it's not, not certain whether it will go through. But then even in a couple of days after that, another huge deal here with um, Zijin Mining looking to buy Continental Gold, which is uh, I think they've got a project in Colombia. Uh, very low cost, good good development project, um, long life. You know, so you're starting to see that what you have that consolidation phase where all the loose assets are getting snapped up by the mid tiers, sort of that transfer from the the senior producers to the mid tiers, um, sort of for clearing clearing prices, and then once all that supply of assets dries up and and you know and these good quality development projects are snapped up as well then it starts to filter down probably to the the lower quality development projects and the um, the higher cost producers if this is going to be a real sort of bull market and takeover market. But this has been talked about for a while that the big companies don't have the reserves. If you look out sort of three to five years, they need to buy projects now. Otherwise, they're going to be short of good quality mines in the, in the future. Uh, and particularly low, low cost, good quality mines there. That, um, and we saw another one in uh, just last week where the Endeavor Mining looking to buy Sentiment, which has a, a big mine in Egypt. Uh, Endeavor's been a sort of a roll-up takeover player for the last few years, sort of gradually buying, acquiring more and more mines. I think they've got five or six producing assets now. And um, yeah, that would create another almost, a, you know, I think a 1.2 million ounce producer. You know, they're really getting into the sort of the senior producer category. Um, so everyone's trying to get bigger now. And, and that's, you know, as long as these transactions are being done at relatively good prices, I don't see that as an issue. You know, I don't think we're, we're seeing huge uh, offers for, you know, outsized offers um, that are really going to smash shareholders forever, like it happened in this sort of 2011 12 period. So I, I don't see this as a, a real top in the market that some people are mentioning. This is, I guess, this is why people uh, these takeovers are starting to happen. You know, because you generally the market's gonna the more you're um, the larger producer you are, the better valuation you get for every ounce you have that you produce. So you can see here these senior companies in the black, you know, gradually they tend to be toward this uh, upper end of the curve here on a enterprise value per production ounce, whereas the the juniors tend to be down here. Um, so you, you don't get that. Um, you're not valued for your production as much, for example, and, and then you know even companies with relatively similar cost profiles, um, you know the seniors are going to get a better better valuation. So people want to get bigger because it increases your the investable um, universe. So the companies that the uh, investors who can invest in your company become ever larger. So you know pension funds and things like this can't invest in the uh, in sort of mid cap gold stocks. They need the liquidity. Um, of, of these senior producers and they won't touch you these and they won't even touch any of these juniors probably don't even know the names of most of them in general so that's that's the rationale behind this and I, and I sort of if you look at something like Saracen you know they, they've with this transaction for the super pit they're probably going to start moving toward that that black category um, and that's that's really what they want to do and you can see here that something like evolution you know if Saracen can start matching the valuation evolution it does show quite good upside um, so in general, I, I agree with that argument, but it's not, they haven't, they haven't got really good bargains for these assets. Um, so, you know, it might take a little bit of time for that, uh, that value to shine through. Um, the, the super pit acquisition is an interesting one. Um, they've, I saw here this in this presentation from Saracen, they've got a lot of experience of people who have worked in at the super pit uh, at various times in their careers. So that's that's a positive, um, you know, I think I saw here. So they, they've sort of, they've 
the super pits had a lot of problems with the pit wall failure and that's really curtailed production for the last sort of 12, 18 months. Uh, but and they're, they're sort of guiding toward this 245,000 ounce figure uh, for the next three and a half years. But even then, that's I think they're they're showing sort of the the low the base case without any upside whatsoever. Uh, and that that sort of follows the the strategy that Saracens had for a while. If you follow their production results, they rarely miss production, and they've usually upgraded production. And every, every financially, they seem to upgrade production guidance by at least once. So. In general, um, I think they're going to follow the same strategy. Uh, and then the other day, you saw that Newmont actually came out with guidance for the 2020 uh, full year, in their case, uh, for 285,000 ounces for their share. So it shows that that 245 ounce, uh, thousand ounce figure that Saracen's going to seems to be even already uh, a bit out of date. And, um, you know, so they'll still be making good cash at that level. It's fairly high cost until that pit wall failure can be fixed, uh, but even at $1,500 gold or in sustaining cost, uh, you know, they're still making six or $700 Australian an ounce and they've locked in hedging for a lot of that as well now, which I think is a, a fair move considering they've had to take on some debt for the for the transaction. But oh, And their other mines are in a good position, Saracen, which I've talked about, talked about in the previous videos. Um, but you can see here that the, the super pit has historically produced at much higher levels than, than it is at the moment. Um, you know, if they can get it, once that wall is fixed, um, they can get, if they can get production back up sort of to 600 or 700,000 ounces on a 100% basis, that's that's where the upside is. Here you can see that they're showing that, what I was talking about before, if you can get getting bigger and um, increasing the, you know, profile of your company to investors. Um, you know, in general has been the right thing to do in the gold market. Um, as long as you're still able to, as long as you don't start getting ahead of yourself and um, believing your own bullshit a bit, if you can keep, keep the way the company's been running to get where it has been, I have no problem with getting bigger um, to increase your uh, profile. Um, so I, in general, I think it's probably a fair move for Saracen to do this. And I think I reckon these guys uh, have, have made good moves in the last three or four years and you can't really um, go against them at this point. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see what the how that wall impact, that wall failure has. Um, you can see here where they've, they've talked about the uh, the moves that have been made in the mines to sort of get increased production, but they've had to lower cutoff grade. And um, that's that's sort of been the how, how why production has fallen in the last 18 months. So in general, I think that's been a fairly good move from Saracen and their stock. I think you, you still want to watch and that. I do think they have that good. Um, they're very similar to where Northern Star were a few years ago and they um, they haven't put a foot wrong from a management perspective. So you just got to back some of these guys and uh, I'm, I'm willing to make them sort of a core holding of mine and just and wait it out and sort of as a way to expose myself to um, Australian dollar gold price moves. Um, some of the other stocks that I've been following recently, I think there hasn't been that many trend, that many uh, announcements apart from the sort of um, Evolution and Saracen announcements about um, buying new assets. Perseus is a stock that's done extremely well. Uh, you know, I've been talking about Perseus as a, if you wanted uh, exposure to a US dollar gold price, I've always looked at Perseus as kind of a bellwether. They're, they are going to move before a lot of the rest of the market or attract um, you know, they're a good sort of speculative stock. They're in a good position now. They've, they've sort of lowered their debts. They're building a new mine. They've got stable production at their existing assets. Uh, they're sort of a fairly known quantity now. And that's why I was really uh, quite, Percy's been sort of my core holding in that to get US dollar gold exposure for the last sort of six months. Uh, and I particularly relative to something like Resolute I'd talked about. Uh, and I was quite, so I've been quite bullish on Perseus. Had a very good move in the last week, and I'm not I'm not really sure what's behind this specifically. Uh, I know that the uh, GDX is getting rebalanced next week, I think, or the week after, and I don't know if there's some uh, research that's saying that Persis might be a candidate to be added. I know it is around the market cap of um, required for GDX, and I I'm, and you know that would mean there'd have to be a big demand for Persis shares in a couple of weeks. So I'm not sure if that's what's behind this, or maybe it was that Endeavor Endeavor takeover of or offer, takeover offer for sentiment that's showing this sort of, um, there's 
people interested in these uh, West African stocks and the and the sort of if if Perseus would be a merger candidate for someone, for example. So I'm not really sure what's behind this move, but it's definitely outperformed every other sort of mid cap gold stock in the last week, um, and now up to you know a rapid move. There was sort of a, a interesting if you look back on the chart a few years ago. That's we're into we're sort of filling these um, these gaps on the way down here. And it's sort of filled a lot of it now up to that a dollar fives kind of level. Uh, it's interesting how when you have these sort of gappy charts, even five or six years ago, you find that if it starts to move through those gaps, it tends to move very quickly. Uh, you know, it's always a strange thing, but that's just something I've noticed. And we've seen that now. So again, I think Perseus is fairly fully valued here, but obviously the market, there's something fundamental here that's pushing this. It doesn't look like uh, just normal trading action. So someone's got a whiff of something uh, and, you know, bidding the stock up 15% in uh, in a space of three or four days there. So that's that's all very positive. Uh, St. Barbara had the had an interesting announcement with their, if I can just grab it here, uh, their CEO is now uh, has resigned or is in the process of, of sort of moving out of the business. Um, hasn't really left them at a, a good time, I think. It's been a stock that's been under pressure uh, since the the issues with um, with Gualia and also the the purchase of Atlantic Gold, uh, if I can just bring up the chart there, it doesn't want to doesn't want to load for some reason. There it is. Um, so you know they're, they're still trading near the lows around this 250 area. Uh, not not a strong chart. I've had it as an avoid. I've said that in the last few times I've I've analysed it in these videos. So I'm not. You know, I think there is an opportunity here to buy it. Um, if when if Gualia is be, becomes more stable, and that you should start to see whether that's going to be the case in the next three to six months, um, they finish when they start finishing a lot of their their heavy capital investments. So, um, you know, I'm still watching it here. It's relatively fairly valued compared to a lot of other gold stocks, but there is still risk. Um, so I'd like to see some of that risk diminish before I would be willing to to enter the stock. Similarly, um, Aurelia Metals is another company which is, um, you know, had been a pretty weak, weak chart. Very similar looking to the St. Barbara chart actually, trading near its, near its yearly lows as well. Um, they've got, you know, they're sort of in a weak production period for the next three, three months or so, but finishing a heavy capital investment phase as well, which hopefully allows them to unlock some new mining areas and. Um, and get some more um, lead and zinc production, I think, as well as what they're aiming for. So that's, that's another stock I'm watching uh, fairly closely here, where I think there might be a little bit of value. Um, but you know, I want to see that. I want to see that quarter, that December quarter number, because they've been guiding that's going to be weak. Um, so it could be a very weak number. So it's just a matter of whether how how much that's in the stock price already. And it's generally I wait till the uh, I assume that nothing's in the stock price in terms of production results and wait for that bad news to be digested. So I'd be waiting until January where I'm looking to buy it there. Um, WAF, West African Resources, has come back quite a lot. Uh, there's been issues in Burkina Faso. There was a, a terrorist attack on a, a mine, a, um, a mine convoy from um, Semafo. So in, uh, in eastern um, Burkina Faso, which is probably about 200 kilometers from where West African resources are, but it does highlight the dangers of, of operating in the country. So I think that's, that's partly been uh, behind this pullback, but the stock, you know, we're still looking at production probably in about six months time. Uh, everything seems to be going well on their, in their project and they're, they're starting to do some deep drilling now, uh, probably in the next month. So I'm still looking here as uh, I think this is good buying time. I did buy some stock back at, um, I'd sold a bit above 50 and then I bought it back at 39 cents the other day on this little gap fill here. I'm not a big one for gap fills, but when I uh, I saw it pull down to that, fill that little gap there, I thought it might be a, a little buying opportunity. So I'm, I bought in there. Uh, I think, you know, we're seeing, they're seeing a little bit of institutional buying there too. Uh, I think Morgan Stanley's been buying up pretty heavily and that's also coincided with sort of an increase in volatility and short selling, which tends to be what happens. But I think once, if the market starts catching on, these guys are producing at less than 500 bucks an ounce US in the first year. They haven't got any hedging at the moment, as far as I know. 
Um, so you could be looking at margins, you know, pushing a thousand bucks an ounce uh, for 300,000 ounces in the first year. So that's a very, very attractive margins. And I think once people start to see the cash flowing here, uh, the stock will get rated a lot higher than where it is now. So I'm still still holding. Uh, I think it's the best, still probably the best development project around on the ASX at the moment. The other one, uh, I haven't talked about this one before in the videos, but I have been, I have owned it for probably uh, four or five months now is um, Adriatic Metals. And that's been a, a very nice performer in the last um, couple of weeks. Gone, they've released their, their scoping study um, for their their project in um, in Bosnia, and that's that's really set the stock on fire. Um, if you see here, there I've got the scoping study where I've just highlighted a couple of things. There, um, looking at a project net present value of 916 million US dollars, and at a fairly uh, you know they've used an eight percent discount rate there, um, internal rate of return above 100%. So this is uh, extremely attractive me metrics for a um, scoping study, and set and really has and showed the um, the market what this thing is worth. So it had been trading around this this 90 cents to a dollar range for the you know the months before that. I sort of bought in um, back in sort of August September in this area around here, and I thought there was still a lot of value, a lot of upside here. So we've seen seen Sandfire take a a stake as well. I think they're up to almost 16 percent now. Uh, and that, that set the stock on fire the other day as there were, and there was also some more drill results. Uh, not very much stock on, stock on offer here. I think management owns about 20%. Sandfire's got the 16%, as I said. Uh, they're well cashed up and there's, a, there's demand for their shares. So this is when you can get companies that have these, these real, you know, if there's a lack of, lack of stock available, uh, it gets up, it's marked up very quickly. Uh, so this is what you want. You want to see companies that can keep that share count low before they find something of, of value and then their, their stock gets marked up a lot. So um, in fact, Sandfire is the perfect example of that back in the day when, when Sandfire was um, being courted by uh, Oz Minerals and, and others at the time. Um, and that's, you know, I, I'm not sure if uh, we can see, it's a long way back now, but you can see this period here where Sandfire had that had dis uh, discovered Degrassa, you know, and their stock went from the sort of you know, we're probably 10 cents is when you're very early in the picture, but even then there were some real re-rating periods here where the, where the resource was getting defined and there were takeover discussions. And so that's potentially what the sort of trajectory that um, Adriatic Metals is on at the moment. Uh, I think the company's probably about at a 250 million at, uh, market cap now. So it's not, it's not extremely cheap anymore, but um, I think there's still plenty of upside here. So it's sort of been one of my core developer holdings or drilling um, for the last few months. So I, I expect that to, to be a good performer as well going forward. So that's a few of the stocks that I'm interested in at the moment. Um, one other probably that I can briefly mention is Cardinal. I think I mentioned the feasibility results last video. Uh, I, I wasn't you know, overly excited by them and that sort of caused me to, to trim my position a little bit in this sort of 37, 38 cents when the, um, the report came out the uh, definitive feasibility study. So I'm still, I'm still holding there. And I think this is a sort of project I was talking about, you know, like it's going to take those, the quality projects and the, the consolidation plays that are happening in the, in the gold space at the moment. Once that all that sort of gets sorted out, I think it highlights sort of other projects that could be uh, of value. And um, now the sort of it's in vogue to look at takeovers and, and Cardinal, you know, basically shopping themselves around to, um, to other larger companies for a, for a takeover or for a, a joint venture, I think. So still a project I'm holding, but they're, they're struggling at the moment to attract a lot of interest. Uh, but I think eventually the, the value shows up there in, uh, in their share price. So that's another one I'm, I'm keeping on holding, but I, I'm you know, not as um, convinced of their success as I was when, I, you know, when they were looking at all in sustaining costs closer to $800 an ounce rather than 900. So Still a good project, but um, it's probably more of a you know a longer longer term sort of transaction at the moment. Like you're not they're not gonna unless they can um, if they don't get an offer in the next six six months or so, uh, it's really reliant on that that gold price I think to um, to show the value of the project and hopefully a rise in gold price sort of lifts all lifts all boats. Um, so that's that's all I've been watching at the moment. 
and I'll do another video soon. And uh, keep in mind that uh, that Patreon program I mentioned earlier. So if you're if you're willing to to get involved, just drop me a message in the uh, in the comments. Thanks a lot.